Hi, I'm Carrie. And I'm Dave. And we are one adventure at a time. We've been traveling full time in our van for the last five years. Yeah, now if you're new to the channel, our specialty is finding free camping across the country. But this winter, we decided to challenge ourselves and spend the winter in Florida. And you may ask why is spending the winter in Florida a challenge? Because we are here to find free camping and budget friendly adventures. And dog friendly adventures. Yep. Now, there are a ton of campgrounds and RV parks in Florida, but there are also a lot of snowbirds. Yep. So those tend to fill up rather quickly. So our challenge is to see what we can find low cost, if not free. Yep. Now, last week we came to you from the Ocala National Forest where we saw a bear. Go check that video out. And this week we are in St. Augustine. We heard several recommendations. Come to St. Augustine. It's super dog friendly. And we found a lot of free things to do. Yeah, I can't wait to get yeah. started. In 2018, we set out to explore one adventure at a time. Join us as we continue our journey to find the best free camping. We are currently at Surfside Park and this is in town free parking. I read that all of the beaches in St. Augustine are dog friendly with the exception of Anastasia State Park Beach. Okay. So we're going to go find out if that's true. This is our first stop in St. Augustine. It's the most important stop because we got to get him on the beach. Time for Rudel to play. All right, this is what we wanted to see. It's a pet station right before you enter the beach. Come on, Rudel. Let's go see. <laughs> He's already excited. To the beach we go. First time we've seen the Atlantic Ocean in over two years. <laughs> We're all so excited. Oh, Rudel Doodle! Oh, good boy! Good boy! Good boy, Ru Oh, yeah! Got the zoomies! Good time on the beach! I'm drinking that salty stuff. Good boy. <laughs> what do you think, Rudel? It drops off right here. Here comes a big wave. Woo! <laughs> okay, not as cold as the Pacific, but still rather chilly. Nobody else is out here in the water. On September 8, 1565, Pedro Menendez set foot on the shores of Florida, removing the French colonists in what some have called a brilliant military maneuver, naming the settlement St. Augustine. With the English and Spanish continuing to fight over territory, the Spanish began construction of a fort to protect the city. They successfully turned back attacks on St. Augustine in 1683, twice in 1702 and 1740. After decades of successfully defending the city, in 1763, Spain gives St. Augustine to Britain in exchange for Havana, Cuba, but regains the control of Florida 20 years later and eventually sells Florida to the United States in 1821.
time we go to coastal towns, I love going to the harbors, the ones that allow you to walk the docks anyway, and checking out the boats. And this is my kind of free fun. Just looking at the names on the boats, looking at the different kind of sailboats and catamarans and whatever kind of boats they have. Um, I like them all, so this is fun for me. Yeah, let me know if I'm weird or not and you like to do this too because I've actually never met anybody else that likes to do this. Oh, that's a nice sailboat there. What do you think, Carrie? Could you live on this one here? I get seasick. I know you get seasick. <laughs> I think I'm more of a sailboat person. But that would still make an awesome house. I really enjoy walking around town and looking at the old houses and the architecture. Some of these houses have been around since the 1700s. Yeah, this is a great free thing to do in St. Augustine. There's a lot of architecture and old things to look at and it's pretty awesome. Yeah, just walking around town. Let's see how old this one is. 1784, no, 1763. If you're not able to do the walking tour, there are the red trolley and the green trolley. There are tours and you can hop on and off the trolley all day for $40 a person. So, plus you get lots of history that we're probably not getting. But today we're out for the free and low cost, low cost version and we're getting our exercise. So onward ho to the distillery. We just made it to the distillery finally. So I think there's self-guided tours and there's paid tours. I think we're gonna see what we can find on the self-guided tour and check it out. Instead of being made from something like potatoes, it makes it very smooth. And in our meal mix is going to be lime juice, ginger juice, cinnamon, sugar, and a hint of cayenne pepper. Enjoy. Thank, Thank you. you. Ready? Cheers. maple syrup and it's aged in a bourbon barrel. That sounds pretty good. We're going to use bourbon barrel for about six months to a year, giving it that golden color right there so you can see. We bottle it up at 90 proof and then we pair it with our tiki mix, which is made with coconut cream, pineapple juice, almond extract, lime juice, ginger juice, and nutmeg. This one sounds up my alley. Yeah. Mm. Pretty good. So this is the famous St. George Street. Now, it could be free, 
if you don't buy anything. <laughs> but I got an iced coffee. I got uh, ice cream. <laughs> but it sure is fun to look around inside the shops. This is nice because there's no vehicles allowed, so it's just a pedestrian walkway with shops everywhere you look. Yeah. So if you come to this town, this is definitely something you're gonna wanna walk down at least. Absolutely. Maybe not come at two in the afternoon. It seems pretty busy. <laughs> On a Saturday. <laughs> St. Augustine knows how to dazzle you with holiday cheer. Nights of Lights from November 19th to January 31st, where millions of twinkle lights adorn every corner of the historic district. Shops stay open later and a variety of tours are available. Not to be confused with the Regatta of Lights, which is coming up at the end of this video. Today we are free camping about 10 miles outside of St. Augustine, right across the road from the Atlantic Ocean. Now we were given this coordinates, this location to camp by a friend that does not want us giving out the coordinates. And I can see why it's close enough to a big city to where if too many people went to this location, it would probably get closed. And as you can see, it's already got a few cars here because this is a popular spot to fish and kayak and just to be this close to the ocean i mean that's a pretty rarity to be able to free camp in florida like this and it was a great night's sleep you could hear the sound of the waves crashing all night i really enjoyed that sound and it made for just a really pleasant night So we did not get to see the sun rise, but nonetheless, still beautiful out here. The recreation of choice today seems to be fishing. We are on Volano Beach and it's dog friendly. And there's a lot of shells.
This is a national monument. It's Castillo de San Marcos. So for us, I'm a veteran and I have veterans stamped on my driver's license. So all I had to do was show them that at the check-in stand and they gave me this America the Beautiful card. A uh, military card. Yeah, military card. So this gets us in, well, it gets me in plus three other people. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. If you don't have this done and you have veteran stamped on your driver's license, you can get this super easy. And if you're not a veteran and you have America the Beautiful pass, that will also get you inside here. And if you don't have a pass to get in, it's $15 for adults. And if you're under 15 years old, it's free. Okay, so let's go inside and see what we can find out about this fort. Again, this is Castillo de San Marcos. This is very cool. You think this is a moat? It sure looks like a moat. <laughs> it looks like that should be full of water. I mean, it's got a seawall and then you could put alligators in it. It looks like this may be functional. So you can see the chain going up to the top and then the pulleys up here. So you should be able to raise this drawbridge up. And that would make sense for this being a moat. Check out this big sliding door. It's just like the castle in the movies that you see. And this thing is four inches thick. Oh, uh, maybe six inches thick. So that slides right in front of the entryway. Yeah, that's cool. And it looks like it works too. Castillo de San Marcos broke ground in 1672 and by 1756, a mere 80 plus years later, all the rooms and walls were completed with solid stone. It is the oldest masonry fort in the continental United States. During the British attacks in 1702, the Castillo de San Marcos was the only structure in St. Augustine to survive invading British forces. Although the fort has changed possession four times, it was never taken by force. Parents, you parallel ahead, this hill. Bandigano, Santa Barbara. <laughs> Carbon. He's <laughs> soaking the nature. Cover your ears. Fuego. <laughs> 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 Largest ball that it could fire only weighed six pounds. That doesn't seem like much, but this little six pounder could throw that baseball sized six pound solid iron ball about as far away as you see that lighthouse. That's a mile and a half away down range. Check out this mortar. So that one shoots up high, goes a short distance, and can explode depending on how they load it where these cannons are doing heavy damage at long range. And these shorter ones, these are howitzers. So this is kind of a mix between the mortar and the cannon. Medium range, lots of damage, but not quite the distance. That's cool. This is a cannon, and I just didn't realize how thick the metal is. Several inches thick, and you can see down the end of the barrel. That's crazy. We came into this not really knowing anything about it and it was amazing. I had a great time. This is way more exciting and educational than I thought. I could do it again. Yeah, you're definitely gonna need an hour, maybe two hours to go through here. We highly suggest it. The presentation, the way they laid it out is just outstanding. Yeah, it's like the best way to learn history when you're right here experiencing, experiencing it. And it's in downtown St. Augustine. Yes. Um, you can't miss it.